Hey guys, have you ever wanted to make a backup on the command line? Have you ever considered how you might overwrite a disk? Ever wanted to overwrite that disk with nothing but zeros? Ever wanted to overwrite something with completely random data? Well, you can do all of this and more with the DD command, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I think the DD command is just one of those essential Linux commands that everyone should learn how to use. When you install a new Linux operating system, it is unlikely in many cases that you will have a graphical utility that can do the same as the DD command. And the DD command, it's actually a rather simple command. Once you understand the basics of it, you can really put it to a lot of different uses across your system. So let's just get on with it. Let's talk a little bit about DD, how we can use it, and the basic operations of the DD command. So the format would be, you may want to use the sudo command, super user do, um, and you can do that to run the DD command, which you will need the privileges to overwrite disks, things along that nature, and to use the DD command. So we can take a look and see that I have a few different ISO files right in my downloads folder. Now, if I have my disk right now, if I want to make a backup of my current installation of Linux, how I would do that is I would first boot to another live Linux disk. And the reason I would do that is, is because you don't want to make backups of anything while it's currently mounted. Otherwise, your backup is not going to turn out the way you hoped. So with the DD command, the format is quite simple. At the very basic level, we use DD, and then IF is input file. So take this into consideration. There is if equals and there is of equals with the dd command. The if equals is input file equals. And the of equals stands for output file equals. And as we've talked about in previous videos, on everything on Linux, everything's a file. So you can consider your devices are files. Your configuration files are, of course, files. Then you also have disks, you also have other things in the Linux system that are also all files. So if we wanted to make a copy of, let's say, our main disk, we would make that our input file. So with if input file equals, we have our main disk, which is slash dev slash sda. What that would do is it will copy all of this SDA disk. If you have SDA1, SDA2, SDA3, SDA4, doesn't matter how many partitions you might have. It's going to copy the entire thing when you use slash dev slash SDA or slash dev slash sdb. Whatever your disk happens to be named, you're going to place it in there if you're making a backup. Now, for the backup, you have the option of backing that up to another disk. Say you want to back it up to a USB stick. Maybe that USB stick is known as SDB. And I'm going to show you in just a moment how to find out what the names of your block device or device is that you want to send it to. So with this command that I'm showing on the screen, it would take an entire copy of this SDA and all partitions contained within and it would send it to a disk known as SDB which might be a backup disk or it might be a USB stick. You can go further than that. You could actually back up to a file. Let's say you don't have a backup disk. You don't have a USB stick to send it to. You want to just save it as a file, much like we download a Linux ISO or image file. We would also make our own in this way, and we can do that very easily. We type the location we want to send it to, then say we want to send it to our backups directory if we have one. And if you don't have one, first make the directory you're going to send it to, and then name the file. So I want to say this is main backup. And then I can just name it 
Dot.img. Now what that's going to do is, if I'm booting in a live Linux distribution, which is my recommendation, and after that you then will find the name of the disk you're making the backup of, then what you're going to do in the of equals or the output file, so this is taking the input, it's all of this, copying the entire thing, cloning it, and sending it to this exact location and you can just make up a file name of your choice you can call it anything you want you can call it anything you want you don't have to create this file before you do this in fact by just running this command it's going to begin copying that entire slash dev slash sda and all partitions now let's say instead of copying the entire disk i just want to copy say one of the partitions say my home partition is sda3 and i can see that when i run something like for example if I run DF and I can see where something is mounted I can select whatever that disk is in order to make a copy of it so if I just want to copy one partition I just simply enter that one partition in the if equals or the input file equals and I want to send it and create a backup file of that and that allows you to make say you have 10 terabytes of space on your storage you might want to make a backup every single month and you might want to do that in a image file format this is going to handle everything for you it's cloning this and it's creating this file now that's how you would make a backup file so you can back up anything you want in this way and if you're unsure of your disk name here's a little tip for that so I can clear this window and what I'll do is first before attaching the disk I'll run lsblk and I can see it only detects one disk it has the disk here the block device is SDA so that makes it slash DEV slash SDA anything under this name section is gonna start with slash DEV so if it's SDB it'll be slash DEV slash SDB if it's SDA it'll be slash DEV SDA and that will be the actual location of this so if I do this and I grab SDA uh, we will see that it shows in the device directory and what I've done here is I've listed everything in the device directory then I've used what's called a pipe to send the output from this to the grep command and from here it's looking for anything called SDA if I didn't use that pipe in grep I could do slash DEV and I would see all of the device names in the slash DEV directory so I was able to pipe that and shorten it but that's not the subject of the video so let's go ahead and now that I know what's attached to our disk it's only SDA I now have a USB stick in my hand I'm plugging it into that very same computer and after I plug it into that computer it's going to become a device in the DEV directory so now I can run the LSBLK command once more and look at that it's popped up as a new disk so say I was making my backup and I wanted to send it over to this USB stick I just plugged up well all we have to do is run LSBLK before inserting that disk and then run it again after inserting that disk as we see down here below so before inserting the disk there is only one disk detected after inserting the disk the new disk shows up on the output of LSBLK so we know that our USB stick is slash DV slash SDD and that allows us to make a backup to that disk now the number one thing and most important part of this is you're gonna to want to ensure that you only make a backup to a disk that is large enough to contain that so in this particular case the SDA would be way too large to go to a 58 gigabyte USB stick so we're not going to be able to do that but we could even do it in reverse say we want to back up whatever's on that USB stick and we want to place it onto our 
storage. Well, we could even send it to the other disk. Now, most important here is to know that DD is also known as Disk Destroyer for a reason. So be very careful when you use the DD command. And it's another reason I recommend to find your disk name to be 100% certain that you're not going to overwrite your important disk you're going to want to run LSBLK before inserting that disk and LSBLK after. That way you can have 100% certainty that you know what is the newly attached disk name. So I could, of course, also take an image file. I could also send that right back to it. So say I want, I have a backup. Say I have a backup and it's stored at slash home slash user slash backup slash original backup dot img now I want to send that to a disk I have inserted into my computer say it's a new storage device maybe it's a backup I want to restore from here that I made with our earlier command and I want to send it to the new SSD disk so then I would do of equals and send it to whatever that disk is named so let's say it was SDB in our case after using the LSBLK trick where we insert it we note the new name after inserting it and then we know where to send it the most important thing though is to make sure you get these commands correct you want to make sure you don't accidentally overwrite your main disk because if you do that if you overwrite the disk you're actually operating on of course it's not gonna you know run it's only gonna run what you copy to it so this original backup in this command is going to be written to slash DV slash SDB you can change that to anything that you need to so you could make it into anything you like it can be sent to either a file name or it can be sent to a disk name regardless it's always going to be a file anyway because everything on Linux is a file and that's an easy way to really understand how to use the DD command you can create files by sending it to the name of a new file name by using of equals and then that file name or you can actually reverse a backup and restore it to a new disk by using something like this take your backup in the if equals send it to the new disk you want it to be stored on and then you can reboot to your backed up storage and there you are you have everything restored and you have that but there's more to DD than that we can write anything we can clone anything and knowing that we can do this we could also overwrite a disk say we want to wipe a disk with nothing but zeros and just do a zero overwrite we could do slash dv slash zero now if we do that of course we're going to send nothing but zeros to that SDD disk and what that will do is that will just overwrite the disk with nothing but zeros we can do more than that with the DD command we can also use something like you random and that is going to be completely randomly generated characters and the you random is used in cryptography so you can also take advantage of it to overwrite a disk with random data say you want to overwrite something with random data well then you would just use a command like this just making sure that you're always especially careful about the of equals command that's what I need to emphasize most it's the of equals command where you have to be the most careful because wherever you send this to is where it's going to write so if you send it to your main disk and you didn't mean to well your main disk is going to be overwritten so you have the option to back up disks as we just showed you also have the option to restore your backups with the DD command you can overwrite your disks with random zeros uh, random data or just zeros up to you how you want to do that you can also increase and this is completely optional you can use BS equals you know 4M if you want and what that'll do is it'll increase the read and write speed so you can actually speed up the DD command a bit by using the BS command there uh, we can also take a look at the man page because we may as well right
So we take a look at the man page, we can see exactly what it's meant to do. So that BS equals bytes is it's actually the number of bytes that it can read and write and a time. And so the default is only 512, but when we add our own extension, we can actually increase that and speed up the write. And if you have trouble with this, you might want to actually lower that because if your system is just not fast enough to do this cleanly, uh, it may fail and you may want to slow things down. You also may want to take advantage of some of these other uh, options here as well. Things like the CONV equals and then, you know, to prevent errors on your cloning. And uh, so there's several options here, but I wanted to just cover the basics today. You can even convert it to different types of symbols as well. So you have options down here for that, all depending on what's on your system. Um, but those aren't really important for most people's use. And I just wanted to cover some basic use today. So I hope you found this useful. Remember, if you want to make a backup of your current system, you have the option of doing that by first finding out what the name of your disk is, boot to a live disk, if it's an encrypted disk especially uh, because you don't want to just copy your mounted stuff you want to ensure that you're getting a clean clone copy so with the of equals and we'll do of equals and we can send that to either another disk say this is the name of the disk we want to send it to we could do bs equals 4m we can also check our progress so we could also add that as another flag so here's what would happen here this would copy this so input file equals this which it copies and clones completely if I added SDA 1 it would just copy the first partition if I just wanted to add SDA 2 that would be the other partition only but if I want the whole disk here I go. That's the entire disk and it's being sent to this location. So this would be another USB stick or another disk or I could even copy it to my current disk and just name a file. And what this would do is if I do backup.img what that will do is it will store this backup in this folder right here as this file name and it will write and read at a faster rate than the default setting. So that's how you do it guys. That's how you do it and if you want to actually overwrite something with random data you can do that too with the slash dv slash u random or random and then uh, send that to wherever you want to overwrite it with random data uh, but I don't I don't recommend doing this unless you know exactly what you're doing so be very cautious but the most important part and the really the only thing you really have to watch out for is where are you sending this data are you sending it to a disk you intend to send it to or are you typing the wrong name because that's where people get into trouble that's what I got today guys make sure to like share and subscribe to see more Linux beginner content like this let me know what you think in the comments do you like this kind of help I always try to put out tutorials that I think could be helpful to people especially those who are getting started with Linux so make sure to like share and subscribe leave your thoughts in the comments below and I'll be back later with more on Linux